you're watching Gears. You know, there's nothing more American than a big old four-wheel drive truck. It's what we take to work and it's what we take to play. But the problem is most trucks right off the showroom floor aren't exactly what you want. Now, I'm not talking about a big old hardcore off-road rig that has to be all overbuilt and heavy duty because you're going to beat the tar out of it. Now, I'm talking about something like this, a daily driver that a guy wants to also tow a trailer with, take to the job site, or take hunting or fishing. When you factor that in, you can see that most trucks could stand to be upgraded a little bit so they could maximize their potential. That's what we're going to look at today with this big white thing. Now, what we've got here is a 2012 2500 GMC that belongs to one of our Duck Dynasty buddies down in Louisiana. Now, we're not going to tell you exactly which one it is. That's up to you to figure out. But obviously, it's going to be a hunting rig and it's going to be a daily driver. So everything we're going to do to this thing is going to enhance those two areas. The first thing we did was send it off to Linex so they could coat the bed, the fender flares, and the lower part of the body. Now, this isn't just for looks. These are all high abuse areas on a hunting rig, and the Linex coating will give them superior protection for years. All right, two things that every hunting rig needs are ground clearance and traction so you can get where you need to go, which means we have got to get this thing up in the air a little bit. And we're going to do that with a six inch Skyjacker lift. Take a look. You've got new massive steering knuckles, cross members, bracketry, hardware, shocks, even blocks and U-bolts for the rear. Now, I know some of you are looking at this going, you know, that's not a whole lot of stuff. And you're right, it's not. Skyjacker gets their lift with these very unique steering knuckles right here. And then these cross members and brackets drop down your differential and your torsion bars so you retain your stock components, which means you keep your stock ride. It's just six inches higher, making this the perfect suspension to put on a hunting rig and a daily driver. Here's how it goes on. First step is to remove the wheels and the skid plates. <laughs> and then mark and label the torsion bars and get them out of there. Now this will require a special puller tool that you can either get from an auto parts store or a GM dealer. But either way, don't try to do this without it because you can't. After that, we'll need to pull off the end links, tie rods, calipers, brake rotors, hubs, everything. Because we have to clear a path to get those original steering knuckles out of there. Then we'll pull out the axles and remove the shocks and the lower control arms.
Transmission jack is another tool that you're going to need on a project like this because it's the best way to support the differential and keep it from falling on your head when you unbolt it. All right, all of this junk here on the table is stuff that we're going to reuse. All this junk here on the floor, well, that's actually junk, so we're just going to get rid of all that. Now, with all the suspension out of the way, there's only one place that you're going to have to cut on a project like this. It's on this cross member, and the Sawzall is going to take care of that real quick. Okay, now it's time to start putting this thing back together. Starting with these differential drop brackets and the differential. Followed by the new front and rear cross members. The skid plate. The lower control arms. And finally, the massive new steering knuckles. From here on out, it's just a matter of installing the new bump stop brackets, then reinstalling the axles, the hubs, the new sway bar end links, and the brakes. Finally, we'll bolt on the torsion bar drop brackets and reinstall the torsion bars and torque them up. Hey, welcome back to Gears and the Duck Truck Project. Well, we're taking this big, white whale of a truck and making it even bigger. Now, like I said before, this truck belongs to one of the guys from the Duck Dynasty TV show, who you're going to meet here in just a bit. But since it is a daily driver and a hunting rig, we got to hit the best of both worlds with this thing. So we already have a Skyjacker 6-inch suspension lift on it. The wheels and tires that are going to go with it are right over here. For tires, we went to Dick's C-Pick and got a set of these fun country radials because they're just a great all-around tire. They're great on the highway and they're great in moderate off-roading or mud. Now this is obviously not a hardcore off-road tire, but that's not what this truck is. Now the size we're using is 35 inches tall, 12 and a half inches wide, and the wheels were stepping up to a 20-inch rim over the original 17s. Now for those who went to BMF, Got these all aluminum eight spokes, so they're incredibly strong. They've also got great powder coating and just enough aluminum on them, so they're gonna look really good, especially on a white truck. Now, quick tip. Brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. Anytime that you do suspension work on your rig, there are some things that you need to do before you start ripping it down the road. For example, if you've had your brakes apart, replacing hoses, you gotta bleed your brakes. If you've raised or lowered the rear end, you can pretty much figure that you're probably gonna have to adjust your emergency brake cables. If you've installed a lift kit, your first trip needs to be to an alignment shop to get everything dialed in properly. And you need to cycle your suspension lock to lock to make sure that your brake hoses aren't binding up on anything or you don't have some clearance issues. Finally, you need to plan on crawling underneath the rig after about 500 miles and checking every nut and bolt to make sure nothing's gotten loose on you. Now, if you do these simple tricks, you're gonna get thousands of trouble-free miles out of your modified rig. If you don't, <laughs> if you'd like to learn more tips to make your life easier in the shop, check out the tips page on the website. All right, while we got the truck up in the air, this is the perfect time to do something about the exhaust system because bigger is not always better when it comes to a muffler. Now, this is the stock system. You can see this big old muffler is incredibly restrictive and it's gonna be nice and quiet, which is perfect for your grandmother's Cadillac. Not so good for a truck like this. So we're gonna replace all this with this heartthrob cat back exhaust system because it's not only gonna sound good, it's actually gonna give us some extra horsepower. Now, they do that by using four inch tubing all the way through, goes into their high flow muffler, and then continues four inch all the way out. 
and then they cap it with a big five inch tip because the tip is an area where size matters. Now, the cool thing about the Heartthrob exhaust is that they design these to be bolted in with simple hand tools by just about anybody, so you can do this. With the clamps in place on the new tubing, they just slide into the stock rubber hangers. Then the muffler and tubing fit together. Once it's all in place and how you want it, tighten the clamps. Hey, welcome back to Gears and our makeover on this big white GMC that belongs to John Godwin from Duck Dynasty. Now, the idea here is not just to give John something that's cool, but to give him something he can drive every day and still take hunting. And one thing's for sure, with six inches of lift and 35 inch tall tires, these stock bumpers ain't gonna get it. Fortunately, we've got a solution. These are the Black Steel Series bumpers from Fab Fours, and they are designed for people that are actually gonna use their truck. For example, this front bumper, as you can see, has got a brush guard here at the top to protect your grill and headlights. And then down lower, it's got a place for driving lights and D-ring hooks and a winch. And we're gonna fill that spot with this 15,000 pound Warren electric winch because a truck the size of that one needs a big winch to pull it out of a hole. Now the rear bumper is just like the front, same black powder coating, same style, and it's also designed to bolt right in place of the stock bumpers. So what we need to do is get those old bumpers out of the way. Next, we need to install the winch into the new bumper, along with all the bracketry and lights. Then it's just a matter of lifting the bumper into place and bolting it on. And the best way to do this is with an engine hoist or four or five big dudes, because something like this falling on your head will definitely leave a mark. The rear bumper goes on just as easily and bolts right to the stock holes in the frame. Now, since we want John's truck to be as unique as it is big and ducks are away of life with him, we decided to christen this big white thing Moby Duck. <laughs> So, we created a logo of the legendary whale duck. It's gotta be a duck whale. And had the guys at Ace Eye Signs make up a yeah, sticker for the door. That size is perfect. And that's 100%, right? Yeah, just a little bit bigger. <laughs> John's gonna die. <laughs> The best part is, John has no idea that he is now the proud owner of Moby Duck. <laughs> and John's reaction when he saw the truck was just what we hoped it would be. <laughs> I love it! <laughs> it's Moby Duck! <laughs> oh, good, look at it! Is that really mine? That's yours, man. Six inches of lift, 35 inch tall tires. It's all aligned, ready to go. Look at uh, the ducks in there. They put the ducks in there. Uh, they were especially proud of that. It's really nice. Now, one of the main reasons that we picked John's truck for a makeover, other than he's a great guy, is he's a real gearhead. And we knew that the truck would be used as it should be. Because we'd tie our bikes down every, you know, during the week and we'd ring it, put new pistons in, you know, and be ready for the race the next week. And he just got me in there doing it with him. I can remember being in there and him just tuliping them valves, you know, and polishing them where you could just about look at yourself in the mirror. He had one, we had a, a stroker kit in one, an XR75, and it had so much compression, I kept blowing the plug out. 
So we was having the Haley call. <laughs> we were just doing different things, but it was that was some good memories with Dad and working on the bike each week. But since John is a hands-on type of guy, well, we didn't want to do all the work for him because that's part of the fun of customizing a rig. So we also loaded him up with some things for him to install, like bed accessories from Amp Research. We also threw in an air raid air intake system, a Diablo sport tuner, and a set of E3 spark plugs to help give Moby Duck a little extra when it's going down the road. You gonna jump into this, do it yourself? You gonna get yeah. Willie and the boys to help you or what? <laughs> you made it funny. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some of the workmanship, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep this to myself. Yeah. Wait, but I might, I, might take it up, I might take it up there and work on it. <laughs> the best part is we know that John will truly drive this truck like he stole it, which is why you build a truck like this in the first place. I'm going to add a black mark to your floor on the concrete when I leave here. And now, Parts Bin. You know, one of the truest sports cars to come down the road in a long time was the Mazda Miata. Just a great handling little car, just a little underpowered. But you stick in a turbo, or drop a V8 in, you got that problem solved. And probably create another one, Body Flex. Well, the guys at Flying Miata have got a solution for that. With these heavy duty frame rails, that bolt right in place over your flimsy stock frame rails and give you much needed rigidity to your unibody to keep that car from flexing. Now they also have all kinds of cross member systems, complete suspension kits, even V8 conversions so you can build the road or track car of your dreams. If you have an early or late model Miata and you want it to go fast, they call it flying Miata for a reason. You know one of the best things that you can put on an engine is fuel injection. And for a long time, one of the most frustrating things you could put on an engine was fuel injection because they were hard to tune, hard to make them run right. Well, Holly has changed that with this Terminator EFI system. Now notice this is a throttle body style injection. You got four injectors built into a slick little throttle body and it bolts right in place of a carburetor, making this the perfect application for a muscle car or a hot rod. Now, of course, you have the ECU that controls it and you have this handheld tuner you punch a bunch of multiple choice questions, you get in the car, start it up and drive it. This thing self-tunes, eliminating all those tuning nightmares of the past. You know, one of the last things that you want to meet on the street is the Terminator. I'll be back. Unless you've got a Terminator of your own, Holly can make that possible. When you're restoring a vehicle, there's no question you are going to need some rubber parts. Fortunately, most weather stripping is reproduced, but there's a lot of small parts like gaskets and grommets and bump stops and insulators that are not. So what are you going to do? Well, that's where this product called Versamold from Row Industries comes in. As you can see, this is a silicone rubber product, nice and flexible as it comes out of the package. And all you do is break off what you're going to need and then you mold it and shape it into the shape that you want. Once you have it shaped, just hit it with a heat gun to cure it. And in just a few minutes, you have a real rubber part that is very strong and flexible and can be cut, molded, and shaped just like you would a normal piece of rubber. The uses for something like this around the house, the garage, the boat, the ranch are absolutely endless, which is probably why Roa Industries calls this Versamold. And now, what are you working on? Brought to you by Spiderweb Modular Storage Solutions. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Lynn Rapin from Covington, Washington, and his project is a 69 Camaro. And his history with this car starts way back in 1969. Check this out. Of course, Lynn is the little guy in the picture. That's his dad who bought the car brand new in 1969. And for the last 40 years, Lynn has been lusting for the car. 
And then finally, on his 40th birthday, his dad gave him the car. But this is what it looked like because his dad had been thrashing on it for 40 years, but Lynn didn't care. He started working on the thing. He said the first thing he did is he tore the rear end out, stuck in a nine inch Ford with 35 spline axles. Then up front, he put on big block springs. He put on drilled and slotted disc brakes. And for an engine, he stuffed in a 496 big block. And to keep the thing from twisting and axle hopping, he put in subframe connectors and traction bars. Now he said the body was in pretty good shape in the floor. But the fenders, eh, they were pretty rusty. So he ended up replacing the metal in the rear fenders, replacing the front fenders, and completely redoing the interior. But when it was done, this is what he ended up with. A Daytona Yellow 69 Camaro. And now it's his dad that's lusting for the car. Which means, Lynn, it's your turn to stick the $100 bill on the dash and see if your dad can grab it. Now, to recognize such a cool project, we're going to set up your shop with a whole bunch of this spider web storage units so you have room to keep parts and equipment and tools and all the stuff that you got laying around your garage. Also, we're going to give you a project build book so you can keep track of what you've done to that car. And we're going to give you a year subscription to Hot Rod Magazine so you can get some more ideas on what to do to the car. Then we're going to give you a Gears fender cover so you can protect that paint when you're out there working on it. Now, the rest of you guys, if you want to get your project featured on the show, you got to send it into what you're working on. We'll do our best to get it on the air. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter and Facebook because we've always got a bunch of stuff going there, too. All right, that takes care of it for today. I got a bunch of stuff to work on here. John Godwin's got stuff to do to his truck. That means you need to get out there and start working on something. We'll see you next time.